GBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news. Food vendor gone down in Clarendon. A food vendor was gone down in Swansea, Clarendon, shortly after midday Friday. The deceased has been identified as 41-year-old Stephanie Gordon of a Raymond's address in Hayes in the parish. The police say about 12.30 p.m., Gordon was at her stall when she was approached by a lone gunman who opened fire hitting her. The gunman then reportedly robbed a man of his wallet and a woman of her red Mitsubishi motor car, which he used to escape. Superintendent Carlos Russell, head of the Clarendon Police Division, has described the incident as most unfortunate, especially since the parish is currently under a 14-day state of public emergency. Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, disclosed on Tuesday that up to May 14, the parish had seen a 67% increase in murders and a 41% increase in shooting incidents compared to the same period last year. Following yesterday's shooting, Superintendent Russell said, This is normally a quiet space, and I know the citizens would have been very frightened and surprised by the shooting, but we're asking them to support us by telling us what they know. We know that persons may have information as to the identity of the perpetrator. The police are yet to establish a motive for the killing. Anyone with information has been asked to contact the Maypen Police at 876-986-2208, for Parts Police at 876-987-0429 or Police Emergency Number 119. Man killed at funeral at Medarest. Gunmen shot and killed an unidentified male during a funeral held on Friday afternoon at Medarest Memorial Gardens in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Police report that the deceased was attending the funeral service of one Randy Shaw when he was pounced upon by unknown assailants who opened gunfire, hitting him multiple times to the head and upper body. He was transported to the Spanish Town Hospital by the police where he was confirmed dead. The body of the unidentified male is of a dark complexion, about 5 feet 9 inches tall and slim built. The male was clad in a blue shirt, blue jeans pants, blue underwear and a camouflage desert clerk's boot. The man appeared to be in his mid-thirties. Lottery scam suspect allegedly tries to bribe cop. Police say a lottery scam suspect tried to bribe a cop while he was being apprehended during an operation in Great Pond, which was in St. Anne on Friday morning. The suspect has been identified as Yuan Suarez, a 24-year-old electrician of Great Pond. Reports are that between 4 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. on Friday, Members of the Lottery Scam Task Force and the St. Anne's Proactive Investigation Unit, Criminal Investigations Branch and Operations Support Team conducted a joint operation at the home of Suarez. During the search, the lawmen found 720,000 Jamaican dollars which Suarez could not account for. An inspection of Suarez's iPhone, the police said, revealed names, social security and the telephone numbers of persons living overseas. It is alleged that while the lawmen conducted further checks, Soros offered some of the cash found to a member of the Lottery Scam Task Force. He was subsequently arrested and charged for possession of identity information with intent and attempted bribery. Soros is scheduled to appear in the St. Anne Parish Court on June 7, 2023, to answer to the charges. New York man tries to flee to Jamaica after allegedly killing teen, see officials, a man accused of fatally shooting a teen in Mount Vernon, New York, attempted to flee to Jamaica a day after the crime, officials say. The suspect, Mount Vernon resident Akeem Grant, 33, was on Thursday arraigned in Westchester County Court on an indictment charging him with the murder of 18-year-old Mount Vernon High School student Tamani Turner. Reports are that on Thursday, April 6, just after 12.30 p.m., Turner was shot twice while standing on the passenger side of a parked car. He was rushed to hospital where he later died from his injuries. Grant was subsequently identified as a suspect and was held the following day at Philadelphia International Report, authorities said. Officials allege that Grant also torched the car to conceal evidence. He is charged with second-degree murder, second-degree criminal possession of a weapon, third-degree arson and tampering with physical evidence and faces 25 years to life in prison on the murder charge. Grant has pleaded not guilty to the charges. British woman charged over cocaine seizure at Sangster Airport. Another British woman has been arrested and charged for allegedly attempting to smuggle cocaine out of Jamaica. Aisha Scarlett, 37, an office administrator of a Birmingham address, has been charged with possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, 
attempting to export cocaine and conspiracy to export cocaine. Scarlett was charged on Monday. She is scheduled to appear before the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday, May 24. The police say Scarlett was apprehended on Saturday, May 13, while at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. They say during a routine security check, her luggage was searched and four packages of cocaine, when over two kilograms were removed from a hidden compartment. The police said the drug has an estimated street value of £60,000. Scarlett was then arrested. Manchester police intensify operations in Spalding. With a 14-day state of emergency imposed in Clarendon, the Manchester police, with the support of the military, have intensified operations in Spalding. Head of operations for Manchester, Deputy Superintendent David Blake on Friday told journalists that Spalding, although geographically located in Clarendon, falls under the control of the Manchester police. He added that suspects have been fleeing southern Clarendon to Spalding and sections of Manchester. I'm David Blake, Deputy Superintendent of Police and the Operations Officer for the Manchester Division. What is happening here uh, this afternoon is a joint operation uh, with the support of the Jamaica Defence Force in the Spalding uh, Commercial District of, of Clarendon. Uh, Manchester, in fact, has, has operational and administrative responsibility uh, for spalling and it's currently under a state of uh, public emergency. So we are conducting this operation in the community to ensure that we restore public order and those men who are wanted in the community are persons of interest. They are, are picked up by the police. Uh, so far we have detained several men. We have conducted several uh, targeted and, and intelligence driven operations and we intend to conduct these operations for the duration of the state of uh, public emergency and to ensure that those who are, who are detained are taken to the, the appropriate detention centre and, and due process is, is exercised. We are mindful that the, the residents have uh, their, their human rights so we are not interfering in any way shape or form with their human rights but we have to ensure as, as the security forces that law and order is maintained and we have had some, some concerns in the sporting community. So we, there, are, there are incidents of robberies and break-ins throughout the nights. And we are getting the information from the public. And we are encouraging the public to continue to share information with the police about men who are wanted, any strange men who are in the community. Because that is one of the concerns that we are having. Uh, persons from the, the, the lower section of Clarendon, southern section of Clarendon, when the pressure is intensified there, they make their way into to Manchester and into, into the spalling community. We're not going to be having it. We're going to intensify the, the pressure and we're going to be coming to get them. So we just encourage the, the, the public to continue to support the efforts of the security forces as we, we, we endeavor to restore uh, law and public order right across uh, Jamaica and certainly in the, the Manchester Police Division. Government unable to suspend salary increase or MPs, says Morgan. Information Minister Robert Morgan says it is highly likely that the government can grant the wishes of the opposition MPs to freeze their salaries. At a press conference on Friday morning, the opposition called for the government to delay the salary increases announced for parliamentarians. Responding to the suggestion, Morgan said this would not be possible. The way the government payment system works is that MPs and ministers are paid through Parliament. Cut off for processing of salaries is usually on the 15th of each month. There is no mechanism, there is no mechanism to give back the money to the government. The way the government payment system works is that MPs and ministers are paid through Parliament. Cut off for processing of salaries is usually around the 15th of each month. There is no mechanism to give back the money to the government. There is no account that you can take your salary and give back, he explained. Morgan noted that giving back salaries would also require the return of income tax, education tax, national insurance scheme NIS, and the National Housing Trust NHD contributions, as well as health insurance and other contributions. So to give back the money is really not practical. The only way you can really not get paid is if you resign, and I don't suspect any of the gentlemen speaking will resign, he said. Morgan also dismissed claims by critics that MPs and ministers are being overpaid. He argued that people underestimate the amount of work that parliamentarians must undertake. He said his role as minister, for instance, includes reading cabinet documents, 
turned up at the office of the Prime Minister by 8.30 a.m., arriving at Cabinet by 10 a.m., discussing a wide range of issues and approving expenditure for different projects. This can last up to midnight in some cases, he said, especially when the budget is being prepared. He also listed going to Parliament on Tuesdays, as well as his responsibility for agencies including the Jamaica Information Service, JIS, Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica, PBCJ, and the National Archives. Morgan was speaking in an interview on Friday afternoon. Samud announced his resignation as Labour Minister, says he still supports wholeness. Minister of Labour and Social Security Carl Samuda has confirmed that he has resigned from the Cabinet, effective Monday. The minister said he announced his resignation last night at the Labour Ministry's Awards Banquet at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel and that he had already advised the Prime Minister. Two and a half years ago, I told him that I would only be here to serve in the Cabinet for two years. That was something that is well known and I've reached that critical moment, he said. Make no mistake about it. I'm still a very strong supporter of the Prime Minister and the team. I would not like anybody to misinterpret this action in any way. I'm still a very strong supporter of the team and will do everything I can to assist, some would have stressed. News first emerged last Friday that he would be leaving the ministry. Following a no-depleted post on the ministry's website, which showed Samuda bidding farewell to permanent secretary, Colette Roberts Risden, and the ministry's executive team. All the best minister, the post read. There has been no information from the office of the prime minister about a change in leadership at the labor ministry. However, there has been speculation that a cabinet reshuffle is on the horizon. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.